Recurrence is, is terrifying. But everything I do, I kind of picture it as this rock and that everything I do is kind of chipping, chipping a piece off of it. And that whatever it is, I'm, I'm making it smaller all the time. We had been together six years at the point I was diagnosed. After her being my caregiver when I was sick, that was really what led to us finally saying, OK, it's, it's time to, uh, to just make this official and get married. I, I, think, I think the trial period is over now that we've been through this together. Yeah. Uh, so, so that happened, and we're like, whoa, good thing we don't have to go through that again. So in July of 2012, I had just come home from a writing program in Rome, where I had been for six weeks, went to the doctor, was diagnosed with um, early stage breast cancer. I have a strong family history, so m the fact that I got breast cancer wasn't an enormous surprise, but the fact that I got breast cancer when I was 28 was. We had just been through this a, a few years earlier. It wasn't an easy slog, and, and we were back to square one uh, with a completely different cancer. Having gone through cancer with Matt, there were things that I knew I would do differently. The biggest thing I would do differently was to educate myself. So I first heard about immunotherapy when Matt was being treated for lymphoma because he received a monoclonal antibody called rituxan. I also found out that my cancer was HER2 positive, which means it grows more aggressively and more quickly. Because of that, my doctors and I decided I would do chemo along with Herceptin. I had a bilateral mastectomy because of my strong family history, so I had to do radiation as well. So uh, I had one year of active treatment. And with immunotherapy, I'd you know, be at work, go to the hospital, get my Herceptin, and go back to work. You know, it was not a big deal. I consider myself cured of cancer. I'll always have that little thing in the back of my mind about, could this come back? Now we both always have to have that in the back of our minds. It's just something that's always going to be there. One of the things that learning a lot about the field of immunotherapy has changed for me is that it has made me much less anxious about recurrence. I've been clinically cancer-free for some time. The vaccine trial I'm in at Sibley Memorial Hospital is looking at a vaccine to prevent breast cancer from recurring. I travel from my home in New Jersey to Washington, D.C. It was important for me to not only gain access to the latest treatments, but to also participate in the process of developing new drugs. Um, thousands and thousands of women before me did it, uh, and I'm benefiting from their willingness to participate. So I feel that this is how I want to give back. You know, I go down to D.C., get my vaccines, feel tired maybe for a couple hours, and then feel fine. The normalcy that you're able to maintain on immunotherapy makes a really big difference in how you can approach the rest of your life. It's very exciting in terms of the, the rapid progress we're seeing and the new treatments that are available. There's a lot more hope now than there used to be. It was only very recently that I started saying I had cancer rather than I have cancer. And that was a pretty big deal. Something I'm really happy and proud to participate in now is in my position for the Cancer Research Institute, building the patient community on the answer to cancer. I know firsthand how important it is to feel like you're not alone, because there aren't a lot of people that have received immunotherapy yet, and so it can be hard to find someone to talk to. Receiving a type of treatment that allows you to be able to play with your kid, or allows you to be able to go to work, or allows you to be able to prepare dinner, or walk the dog, or whatever it is, all of those little things add up. They add up to a better quality of life, for sure, and they add up to the ripple effect of cancer treatment being much smaller.